Welcome everyone to our next talk as part of CPO Mastery Conference. We are thrilled to be joined by Duana Wilczek, who is the Senior Vice President of Product Strategy and Innovation at Coupa, a leader in business spend management. Donna joined Coupa during the early startup days and helped grow the company to achieve a successful IPO in 2016. She's an inventor with multiple software patents and prior to Coupa held product and service roles at IBM, Trinet and Accenture. Donna's talk today will focus on something that's really important for product leaders and something that we all struggle with, the art of saying no. As product leaders, we're overwhelmed with the wants and needs of our stakeholders and our ability to say no is critical to the success of every PM and leader uh, and, and something we should all know about. We're excited to be learning from your experience here, Donna. Donna, I'll have you take it away. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And I think it really is as a product leader, as an owner of your product, the ability to say no is, is a key piece of what you need to do to be successful. And I always start by saying the first thing is don't just say no. Don't come out and say no, regardless of how tempted you are in that kind of that blink reaction to just say, you know, this idea doesn't make any sense. I don't want to do it first, take a step back. And it's really critical as a product leader for you to first understand. And I'm always reminded of this kind of model of, are you able to see all of the perspectives before you are making a decision? So if you're looking at an object, are you seeing it as all blue? Are you seeing it as all red? Are you seeing it as half and half or another half? Depending on your side, depending on your point of view, your understanding of the request is going to change. So it's really critical that as the very first thing is when a customer is coming to you with an idea or a request that you first seek to understand, understand all of the components and understand the impact that this request is going to have to the organization. How will it impact the customer? Is it a minimal impact? Is it a massive impact? Is it subject to a government regulation that you are not aware of that is going to happen or is already here? Really understand the impact and helping the customer think about things in, in form of impact will help yield a successful outcome. Because of course, we've all worked with customers that come to you with an idea that maybe, well, this is how we've always done it, but they haven't really thought through the process or the, the request from a lens of impact or if it's still needed in today's day. Maybe it was designed at a time where the technology was not able to support a better process. So first, take a step back and really sit down and talk about the impact of the organization and a quantifiable outcome. And when I do that, you really want to look at quantifiable value. Sometimes the little requests that are coming in are equal to a bigger effort. So you want to find some balance in your roadmap and your ability to say yes or, or no to these customers and understand are there a series of things that could be done that could have bigger impact or as much impact of one little thing, especially if the little things can have more impact to more customers where things can be done in a more configurable model. But without understanding and without understanding the impact and the quantifiable value, it's really difficult to be able to make an informed decision. And in order to help your customers see things and understand things, it's important for your customer to come along on the journey with you. And sometimes we get lost in the forest, right? You can't see the forest because of the trees in front of you. And I always recommend that product leaders sit with their customers and help them understand the journey that you're on. Help them to understand the milestones that are coming along the road and why you are making the decisions you're making, why these decisions have been made and how they will impact the customer. Some of these things, as you're explaining and bringing your customer along for the journey, 
actually get the customer to withdraw the request and say, actually, the things that you're doing are better suited for our company and will create more impact later or even more impact along the journey because we simply didn't see all the all the components and we were more siloed in our thinking. Sometimes that happens. Now, if that is not happening, and as you're working through the roadmap and understanding the journey, one of the things you'll need to do is think about investigating alternative options. So instead of simply saying no, do the work, do the homework of understanding your technology, your product, your capabilities. Think about things in an art of the possible mindset and bring the customer options and ideas for being able to provide that same type of impact or approaching that level of impact, but doing things in a different way. Because sometimes these alternative options may be good enough, maybe enough for that organization. And I always hesitate, I don't call them workarounds. They're simply options. And each organization can decide whether those options make sense for their business. But without having that good understanding, without understanding the, the impact and the value, and without really working with the customer on understanding their business, it's near impossible to figure out whether these options will provide value. But I feel like the investigation and the optionality is a really critical component to your customer where you're saying to your customer, I cared enough about you and your request and your business to do the work, to investigate options and ideas we have for you to get value faster. And this shows the spirit of partnership. If those options really aren't working, you next need to work with your customer on prioritization because many customers will come to you with a lot of different ideas. And as you're going through the process and understanding the impact to their organization, it's critical that you work with the customer to start prioritizing these elements and prioritizing broadly across all the requests that are coming in prioritizing the urgency and the importance, as well as, of course, the, the size of the request, how long it'll take you to do in order for you to get a good picture of when these requests might or may not appear. But prioritization is critical as much as we all want to do everything. And we all have so many ideas that are coming to us every day from inside the organization, from our customer community, from partners. Prioritization is critical to long-term success. Helping your customers work with you on that is one great way to get them to a model where they're more understanding of the decisions you're making, especially if you can bring your customers together in a forum where they work together to prioritize. Maybe that's by industry, maybe it's by region, maybe it's by industry or size of company. But when you get the companies, the customers working together, it, it can be sometimes magical. Uh, we recently did that for the airlines industry at Macupa, where we had some of the largest airlines in the world sitting down at the virtual table with us prioritizing needs for their industry. And I feel, I feel like that was such an important aspect of helping a company understand that their individual requests are part of a bigger plan. And that's where the partnership really comes in. Partnership is critical. As a product leader, it's important to build these relationships with your customers. Because in terms of the art of saying no, if you do all of these elements where you're understanding, you're working with the customer to understand the plan, you're working with the customers to understand priority, and the customer and you have a relationship based on trust, based on doing what you say you're going to do, and in a spirit of partnering and taking the industry forward, it's that partnership 
that will make all of the difference in your mutual success. And it's also that partnership that is really critical when you think about this final note of it's actually okay to say no. When you've gone through all of these processes, when you've gone through and worked with your customers, it is simply okay to say no. And sometimes this is a very uncomfortable spot to be in for people, for humans. And I recommend that everyone as a product leader gets comfortable with being uncomfortable at times. As long as you have done the work, as long as you have built the relationships, as long as you are not just, again, coming right out and saying no, and as long as you are firm in the why you are saying no, explaining, it's a critical aspect to be, just get comfortable with saying okay, or saying no. Um, I can tell you at Coupa, through the years, we've said no numerous times at the right points in time. Uh, when I first joined, you know, about 10 years ago now, we were a cloud only model in a multi-tenant SaaS solution. That was not the norm. We had so many companies that would come to us in the earliest days and say, well, we want alternate models. We want it to be on-prem. We want it to be legacy. And we would simply say no, because that was the right decision for the long-term success of our company. So instead of being motivated by taking a quick dollar, we were motivated by doing the right things to help our customers be more successful over the longer term. And through the years, there's been times where we've said no in sales cycles to prospective customers where we knew that the requests were not going to make those companies successful. And it's interesting that now, a couple of years later, after those things happened, those same companies are coming back to Coupa and saying, well, actually, you saying no was the right thing at that point in time. We just didn't know enough. And we sometimes needed to fail a little bit more before we recognized that your, the model of multi-tenant SaaS, of configuration, of of being a, a model that takes community impact or community input into our roadmap, not just developing every single thing a customer says, is how that customer will be more successful over the longer term. So in summary, I would say, don't just say no, don't come out and say no, take a step back, investigate, work with your customer to understand, look for alternatives, really partner with your customers and the, part and the customer community on developing a strategy for the long-term, and then ultimately get comfortable with, with and being okay with saying no, as long as it's guided in, in the right reasons and making sure if needed, depending on the decision, that your management is aware and supportive and helps you in that process. So that's a little bit about uh, how I see kind of this art of saying no. Thank you, Donna. From your presentation, what I got is the way you say no is more important than the actual no itself. And you explained that you have to start with understanding, then investigating options, not workarounds. And then prioritizing with your customers. I loved that airline example uh, that you have them all come together. And once that partnership is formed, then doing the hard thing of saying no is so critical to your company's success and your success as a product, product leader. So I want to thank you very much, Donna, for sharing your knowledge and insights with us today. The examples and the best practices that you've shared were insightful and things that we can all take away. Folks, let's give Donna a big virtual round of applause. Thank you for having me, and I hope it's helpful. It's absolutely helpful. Audience, we'll be back for additional talks later away. Don't go away. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.